everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and tonight we're going to be doing an artist knife painting. So artist knives or palette knives are really cool tools like this. They kind of look like something that would uh, spread on peanut butter. If you want to know this exact set of knives, I have it in the description below. Also, I make a set of uh, art sherpa plastic palette knives that are really, really good. So either one of those will work well. We're going to be painting this sweet floral. This is very beginner friendly. And I am going to be explaining it step by step during the live stream. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to make sure that you guys get the good angles and can see all the paint action. And also he helps uh, me identify questions uh, that are in the chat. If you have a question, remember to put it in all caps. That does help us see it. We don't do channel shout outs or name shout outs. Um, but I am here to answer art questions and what's always exciting to me. So don't be like worried about asking a question, especially for new questions or how we get better. You're noticing some paint already out, ready to go. Abstract, innovative acrylic. What is this? So one of the things about artist knife painting that can be challenging, especially if you're new to it, is that it does use more paint. And if you're concerned about budget or the cost of that, it's kind of tough to rock that right off the bat with a pro paint. This is the student paint that I recommend in Heavy Body. Um, it's abstract acrylic. It is by one of my favorite pro paint companies, Senelier. They have amazing, cool, awesome history. I mean, you're like painting in like the footsteps of Degas when you use this. So you can always feel really good about it. It comes in the cool handy dandy 500 milliliter size. And this actually is like the cost of some of the tier one tubes of paint. So that's pretty awesome. Um, you can find these on Amazon. You can find them in art stores. If you're in Canada, they're at King's Framing and Art, and there's another one that carries them there. They're all around the world because Senelli is one of the oldest art companies in the world. So this product is everywhere. And what's great about it is even though it's student, even though it's economy, it doesn't level out, lose its body. So the palette knife stuff that you like so much that you would use it for doesn't go away as the paint dries because a lot of the paints will kind of get thin on you and as they dry they kind of flatten and level out and then you're like i went to all that trouble to use all the paint do all the hard work and it's it's like watching a souffle go down so it's not ideal um barbara reyes says my granddaughter wants hair like cinnamon what does she use or i use a combination of products i use that's not your natural hair color Right now, I'm using the L'Oreal Metallics uh, that doesn't require bleaching on my root. Weirdly enough, in the blue, not the purple, because on my hair it comes out purple. I don't know why. And I also use Splat, and I also use Ion Fantasy Colors. Um, I try to lighten only with Ion when I have to, and I maintain the color with Viral Shampoo from Amazon. It does sound complicated, and if it does, it is a little bit, but the viral shampoo from Amazon is the key because no matter what you use, the issue is fade out because we all want to wash our hair with a hot... I don't, have an, I don't have a hair show, just so you know. I don't suddenly think I've become Guy Tang over here. I'm just saying. Sherpa uh, Tang. I just like... I don't know about you, but I'm just at a stage in my life where a cold shower for, like, looks is not a good trade-off for me. Right? I'm at the comfy kitty stage in my life, and the comfy kitty does not want to get in a cold shower. So the viral shampoo lets me take a hot shower and keep my hair bright. That seems hmm. like a very good way of going. Hair tips. So you have some them now. Wishes. All right. What are the wishes? Wishes. What we the, have what, what wonderful wishes, wishes. Now, in our group, the Art Sherpa official, there is a file. And in that file, it says, please, wishes and requests for prayers here. And um, so you just go in there, and it's, it's stuff you wouldn't normally share in the group. You can put a wish there, and if I go by and see them, they may end up on your canvas. So Barbara Rea, who just asked the question about hair, getting another one, relief for neuropathy. So understanding relief and treatment for neuropathy, I get that. Um, I know people have been through that, so definitely wish for that. Uh, wish for, oh, this is really cool. So Ashley's husband has written a book, and he is sending it to publishers, and we are wishing, all of us very intently wish, 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 that it gets picked up by a publisher and that it, it, it hits number one on Amazon. Let's go all in, right? And it's a huge book. And Ashley's like back later, like whooping it up with us. Cause that, that's what's gonna, 2021. Come on, 2021, <laughs> bring me good news. Kathy's brother Ron to have good results from his chemo. And this one was close to my heart because I understand what's going on there. Heather Campbell is wishing for us. She would like good thoughts, wishes, and prayers for people who are working 
voting and polling stations, those that are making the American vote happen right now, and also for those coming to vote, that everybody's safe, happy, and okay. And that however you vote, and she was so beautiful in this, however you vote, that you have a good, happy, safe voting season. So that's all we want to say about voting because that's about all I can do. But her wish came from such a positive place. I kind of broke my own rule for her goodness. But, she had goodness. But yeah, I wanted to say something. Don't say it. No, not even. So. <laughs> Fine. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's why November 1st to November 7th, we are live every day at 1 so we can all have a break from it all. But we do wish that Kathy's wish comes true. So out right now, we have more colors to come. List in the description below. We have... A thalo blue, uh, this is really, in, in this line, it's primary blue, but it's thalo blue, dox, purple, burnt sienna, thalo green, cad, cad yellow medium, and titanium white. Um, the colors in the line that I'm in are named a little differently, like the purple is 917, it's just purple, and the yellow is primary yellow, and the blue is primary blue. But that's what it is. So how we're going to start this out is we're going to get a very kind of long, trowly little blade, 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 blade. And we're gonna take a little bit of our green, just a smidge, a smidge, and we're gonna go into the yellow and make a very yellow green. You see this yellow green? It's so bright. I see it. I just it's don't know where so you're going with bright. it. So bright. I gotta wear shades. It's radioactive. It's like ready for Slimer. It's 80s green. <laughs> it's um. Now I'm gonna come here with this knife. I'm gonna slice out my white paint. Notice that when I slice it out like that, it doesn't contaminate all the white paint. Uh, sometimes when you're first using a knife, paint management and how you get control over that can seem a little overwhelming. I'm gonna continue to mix this in. We want a super light color to begin with. If I want more green into it, I add it at this stage. I add the green slowly, guys, and the reason is, is that it just, over, you can see just that little bit. It's like, you know how there's certain dyes or pigments or beets, just beets. Certain things just stain everything. This does that. So you want to make sure that that is in like that, looking pretty good. I like this color. It should look like something you might find when you're out antiquing, looking antiquing. for some really cool finds. Now, before I put it down, I am going to take a brush and put my wishes into the ether. My wish is into the ether. This is just a brush with water. And this is watercolor pencil, so that's why it breaks down. The water part of this is not necessary for the palette knife in any way. I just want to make sure that the words are not popping through because we want them to be part of the painting. We want that positivity to go out there. We need the positivity. Breathe in the good vibes. Breathe out the worries. Breathe in the good vibes. Breathe out the worries. My kids hate it when I do that. They give me the mom face, but it does I think work. It's nice. It does work. It does. He doesn't do it either. Also gives me the face. But he's like, if you want to breathe in the the good thoughts and breathe out the worries, you go for it. Um, I love this, Amy Ovar. Love to you all. Wonderful wishes today. Hugs for everyone. Have so much fun painting this evening, Cinnamon John. Happy Halloween tomorrow. Yes, we've got a Halloween tomorrow. We've got our last kind of little painting that could be in that theme. It's a Kraken with D&D dice. So if you're a gamer, you got to come by. Now, see this load there? It's kind of like loaded like it's frosting. And we're going to just come here and scrape like this. Mm. We're just spreading it out. Scrapey, scrapey. Spread it, spread it, spread it. And already I got to go back and get more. I used all of my white paint. Now remember, you can spread forward and backwards, but you do want to see some texture. That's like kind of the point of the whole thing is the texture. So you can see why economy paint is nice, nice for this. You want your economy paints. You can definitely use all the paint you have out, though, pretty easily. I learned something today. I learned from my mom that John Little, <laughs> my mom's ghost after the show, has to take all the leftover paint and paint new canvases for the next day. <laughs> so I want to say to you, look at how light your co-hosting is. I don't make you paint canvas backgrounds. I'm so lovely to you. I make you soup, I paint canvas backgrounds. I'm so sweet. Okay. <laughs> Continue to, to mulch. <laughs> Bears. 
All right, mulch and bears has me. He deals with the bears and the mulch, so I guess it's fair. I still think I'm super sweet. You are super sweet. I, I would trade mulch and, and all sorts of work outside. No, you like doing it. You get in your little weird suit, and then you go out there with your little tractor. We can bring you in. I have a John Deere. <laughs> Like tractor insulted over here. I'm going to have to put yeah. out some more white paint. But again, it's very nice that the economy caused of this. That I don't have to worry about it. And that I do really, really like. Cinnamon puts on banjo music every time I put my suit on. And I go outside. She's like, starts singing Green Acres. Is the place to be. I'm living is the life. Morning. I'm just saying, it's not so bad out here. Better than the Adams family, which is what we're usually all kind of humming as we go around. <laughs> it spreads like a virus in my family. It starts out, you know, one kid's like, da -da -da, and then all of a sudden the whole house is doing it. And that's not even just during Halloween, it's just during Halloween we don't look as weird. Mm. So again, just mixing this up. Isn't that lovely? It is. You just spread that out. And you can see it gives you some just wonderful, fun, bring it this way. You can see I can get to the edges very nicely on my canvas. If you want to scrape any paint back up, you come back like oh, that. Hold on. Yeah, you're, you, you go like you, this. You, you take you the slow, knife. You slid over the edge. Yeah. Okay, you just take your knife along the edge there. If you have paint over the edge, and then you just go, living on the edge. All the of a is. sudden, you're an Aerosmith song from the mid-90s. <sighs> well, that was a fantastic album when it came out, and I thought it rocked. There was a time I could have been in an Aerosmith video. <laughs> that time is gone. I would have you in my Aerosmith video. Oh, you're just my favorite. You know that? You are just my favorite. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my green here and I'm going to kind of get it in here. I do want it to be a little creamier and whiter so that the other kind of green yellow on the painting will stand out. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. We have three Don Deere, says Diane. That's a lot. You want to send one over? Okay. No, 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 no. See, this is the problem. I also have two John Deere's. One of them is dead. They do tend to collect around each other. I have been trying to find anyone who would take said second John Deere away. Let me. <laughs> it is not as easy to get done. Here, you need to get it on an angle, and we're going to okay. show them something. So I've taken right. this yellow. I made just a slightly different color, and I, what I'm wanting is a contrast on the piece. This uh, kind uh, of gives uh, it so you can see the bead shh, here. Shh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I can't see anything. I wasn't ready. Okay. All right. So now you're I'm ready. talking about your tractors. Well, I didn't know you were trying to. Get you don't that. even do underpaintings and you don't catch the video. How am I supposed to learn anything? I don't know. <laughs> so you can see that my knife is pretty parallel to the surface and I'm not pressing down. And that's how I get that sort of little crazy, cool, uh, artful, almost you like. Keep, stop that. You're going too fast up there. I, got, I have I, to go fast. I have a. I have it's a, not a slow technique. <laughs> You just put a little bit out there, and that gives you kind of a little bit of two-tone. Mm. You like the two-tone? It's fancy. Enjoy your fancy two-tone. I'm just going to use it all up. You know, every time you do it, you do it a little different because you use up the paint. Wipe this out on my paper towel. I'm not even going to use water. I'm just going to wipe it out on my paper towel. Put out more yellow. Mm -hmm. Put out more yellow. Oh, Irene says, I should be grateful that you haven't come home with a backhoe. Irene, oh, there's, you don't even know what my life is like, Irene. I would, I would take my husband up against anybody's husband for weird equipment coming home. Just. I really want a no Kubota with, a, with, a, with one, a backhoe and a front loader. Yeah, just a, the smallest one I can get. Little tiny, does. tiny one. He does. But I mean, I'm not saying you're not going through it with yours as well, Irene. I'm just saying. I'm saying. He's a handful. Yes, okay. Irene, that's what I want. 
exactly what you have with the chipper and the splitter and the backhoe. And I would paint it yellow and name it B2. Yeah, look at me. I'm already, I'm already arting, you can tell, because now I'm going to turn a little bit. I don't have to take my paper towel away to do this. I'm going to turn my canvas a little bit just so I have a better angle All right. um, to the technique that I'm about to do. I'm going to take my green and some of my burnt sienna. And you guys know how that goes when these two get together. What do they do? They make a very dark green, don't they? They're so dark. And mix that up pretty thoroughly. I'll wipe that off. And then I'm going to load up a little bead. Hmm. Right, so you kind of see that right here? Yeah, yeah. Where are you going with it? I don't know. We're going, okay. going this general just, direction. Maybe don't zoom to... in too much on this one. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to be pushing right. this up. Right. We're going to be doing some of those really cool stem pushes. Uh, okay. Where the green, you got to come back and tip it every once in a while. We'll come in and give you some nice deep stems. Curving it. Fine lines with artist knives are super possible. Now, as I come around the side, I may need to all my paint in a higher pile. I'm going to turn this here and then I will just make sure that the run of my flowers is right here. Now mm -hmm. the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come, I've got a bead loaded. Doing the dark colors. Got to get them dark greens going, right? You know, I'm going to see. Isn't that nice? It is. Very similar to this here, but we're just making short little marks that remind us of the blades of grass or plants that can be getting places. I'm going to throw the picture in picture up here just for a moment okay. so that uh, they can see. That's a good idea. There, what they can see. Boom! Oh. That's what we're doing. Making the thing. Making the things. Just so they can. What you and me are doing right now. We're doing this right now. Whatever else is going on in your life, you got this. This is art. Even if it goes pear shape, you just have weird pears. Now, how right? much pressure are you applying when you're doing this? So this is all pretty light. The knife edge, when you come up, that's a firm pressure. When you're making that line. When you're making one of the little green leaves, that is a much lighter. Like if I come here, go like that, you can see the bead on it. If I make these little marks to imply leaves, it is a lighter pressure. Just a kind of touch pull. Can seem mysterious in fast videos how it's happening. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. And I can also come in and do some little downward pulls, and give me some rounded shapes, as they do. So you know you've got some motion. I'm going to take my paper towels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my paper towels go. I'm gonna do. I'm going to wipe my knife off. I'm going to go ahead and pull some of my yellow into this mix here. And it's going to give me a lighter color. It's still got a little bit of that brown in there. It's still got a lot of that. And come here. And I just made a little wiggle down. We'll make some little of our side leaves. These would be like maybe leaves that had a little more light on them. And this also is going to help us build our base up a bit. Mm -hmm. Down here. Because you want this to feel fairly full. Like there's a bunch of leaves here. And so this is a great way to fill it up. Now we have dark values and light values. Just enjoy kind of looking for places to put your paint. Mm -hmm. So you can see how thick it is. Now John can kind of zoom in. I'm going to sip my cocoa. You know. And then. Uh, you could really. A, oh, Lynn is recommending horror movies. Don't trust her. 
Don't think so. You zooming in? Here's your, I Is it not? I mean, like I was, zooming. I was actually, I was Is there more part. zoom? There's a lot give, more zoom. Give them a deep look. They can right. get a sense of, just of the application them. there. Because you guys can see that application now. Get a real sense. When you're far away, it all sort of blends together and it gives you this sense of, oh, that's a lovely little floral. But when you're up close, it's very brutal and rough. And so uh, it's nice to see both, you know, very, very much. Very nice to see both. I'm going to, hmm, I think I'm going to grab this very strange. This is the two that you just want to round one. What you're going to look for is you want some type of nose that's rounded. One of these types of noses that's rounded. All right. Turn this a little bit at an angle. Right. And I'm going to come here and have even some of this bright green. And I load it on the, the nose of my brush. And I'm going to make little touches. These are like little buttons. You may wonder, does this bring your frosting game up? Yeah. Yeah, you can do all this with buttercream, by the way. Huh. <laughs> I'm surprised. Like, they don't ever want to have me on one of those bake-off shows. I'll be like, oh, yeah, no, I got it. Let's do it. You be pout knife painting? Dude, sculpt and fl like, all of it. I'm like, yeah, no. The only thing about those shows that's stressful is the time limit and also the dealing with the other crazy people. Like, I think um, it's the team challenges that would be hard for me. Hmm. We're just putting these little greens there. And they're like the way that some plants or flowers kind of have little little green edges. And you can always, as you're going, yep. include some maybe thought out little round leaves. This I love. This, this, this one there. Yep. These, none of the knives I'm using are over $8 or should be over $8. They should all be eight and under. Mm. And you can do this all with my Art Sherpa uh, artist knife. You really can. Making a light green again. Sometimes I'll get it and I'm like, oh, it got too heavy. Just pulling those little round bits in. This part's a so, little fussy, but I love it. There were some folks asking if you could chat on the Roku. And you can't chat on the Roku channel. But if you open up the Art Sherpa website, you can open up the chat channel over there. And you can chat on the website while watching Roku. And in the future, or you could probably pull up a device and chat on the device on the YouTube and then. Oh, well, no, no. So like, for example, if you're just watching Roku at home and mm -hmm. you want to chat with some other people who are also watching the Roku, if you, I'm going to create a channel on our website. So if you go in there, there'll be a little drawer. There isn't one right now. Actually, I think it is. I'm going to go check it. Well, right there, right. there is one. I don't know if anybody's over there. I'm going to go right now. Okay. John can show you guys can go over there and test it out for us. I'll just make it, I'll just make a Roku, um, what do you call it? Channel. Okay. In the side there. And then if you're, there's a couple of them in there. So if you guys want to go to the website and then join that room and then like, we're watching Roku. And see, we're just putting these little leaves in. Wonderful little shape. It's just dot and a pull. You got that, right? You got a dot and a pull in you. Of course you do. You're super good. You can handle it. See, how do I do that? Pulling down these sort of like thick little fingerling leaves. Little thick fingerling leaves. And you can see the value of the leaf, right? That it's lighter. 
that it's thicker. These are things that create its structure. Limes do a pretty cool fern too. Hmm. You can pretty much paint anything with an artist knife. Portraits, eyes, whatever you want. You just have to get, like with your brush, you make marks. You get used to the mark. That's what you're doing. You're getting used to the marks. Used to the marks. That's all you got to do is get used to the marks. Irene was noticing there were some other uh, YouTube artists using uh, the, the contour wedges to make special effects in their abstracts. Mm-hmm. They do great. There's so many cool tools out there. Uh, Princeton has a line called Catalyst that's fantastic. Um, you know, all these little rubber sculpting tools are interesting. There are stuff to do. You, there's little effect knives. Like, mm, this pretty much does what you think. Grooves. <laughs> does grooves. Looks amazing. Does grooves. But if you want a groove, mm -hmm. if you want to get your groove on, get your groove back, go groove. Oof, goof. It was so, I like, I followed that story. It was so bummed when it turned out. He was like, not there for real. I was like, really love that movie. Hmm. It's okay. Everything worked out for her. A few people didn't know what I'm talking about. Stella. I oh, have a lot of love for Stella. I do. Just pulling those greens in. Just pulling those greens in. Putting little leaves out. Mm. And isn't that, isn't that fun how that layers up and that builds up? Yeah. And the thing about heavy body paint is it will stay like this. It stays. It does stay. Yeah. And do little other little pull leaves like we did earlier. Here and there. And give yourself a even layer over that. Make it feel like that leaf has maybe got a couple, couple values. Here we go. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Next flower. You ready? Where are you We're going to take a bit of this white and some purple. And we're going to blend those in together and get a nice light purple. As you do. Loosely mixed a bit. And guess what else we're going to loosely mix in? A little blue. Look at that. My favorite. Wow. I love it so much. All right, you're going way over there. Yeah. Let me, um, let me get it back at its angle right. so you can get into it. All right. We're starting to move the studio, so you guys will see me. Uh, if all goes well and we get the studio moved, if, 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 if there is a painting coming up, it's a bridge with all trees that's insane the reference just blew my mind i wasn't even planning on teaching it to you guys but i saw it and i was just like we all need to paint this like we need to breathe there kind of like the turkey that hit the you're like why are we painting a turkey look at him he's gorgeous anyhow so if that happens i'm going to do a 16 by 20. 16 yeah by 20. we'll do a nice big 16 by 20 canvas uh, some people have they're concerned. Do I know how to do that? And I was like, yeah, you know, we used to do that a few little bit. We can absolutely do that again. And we're just creating these little, aren't those fun? Little dots, little spots. There's no right or wrong to this. Your dot is as valid as my dot. Believe in your own dot. It's 
put little little sprigs of flowers here and there. Be sweet. Be romantic. It's fun. You look for spots. You go for it. At the end, what you have is a gorgeous painting. Now, if you want to varnish, my friends, the recommendation is three weeks to wait dry. Um, all the palette knives now, I'm in an area where I've got climbing control and it's pulling a lot of moisture out of the house. So they were dry enough to move in morning, but I would still leave them to just quietly cure and think about their life choices in, uh, for at least a week before you do anything substantive. But with varnish, it's best to uh, wait a good bit if you can. Okay. Do you love these purple flowers? I love them. Oh, those are awesome. I love them. We're going to be going here through there. Wiping out. Let's, let's start. See how we get that little bit of white. We slice it. We slice a little purple. A little loosely mixed purple. We like it. And we get a little blue. We loosely mix that in there. That's the magic. What kind of palette are you using? This is the Strathmore Peel Paper Palette. Um, if you're worried about the planet, which is probably a good idea, um, you can use a glass palette, not one from a picture frame. That is life threatening. But you can use a tempered glass palette. Uh, New Wave makes a really good one. Um, some people do, uh, they get. Uh, a lot of times kitchen glass because people expect you to move it and shift it and set it up and down as you would versus framers. No, you're not supposed to do that, right? Like with sliding glass doors, you're not supposed to be jangling them around, right? They're, mm. they're meant to do a certain thing. So certain glass is meant for certain things. You want the tempered glass that's meant for that, that's done in the, in the safest one out there. And if you watch our video on it, um, you will be like amazed. I'm like whacking it, whacking it with this big wrench. And I can't even break it. And that's a, it's a pretty good one. Pretty okay, I feel. In my mind. In your mind. In my mind. Just doing little touches of flowers. Look at that one. Oh, that's a pretty flower. I like that flower. Mm. Sometimes I go, I'll be like, oh, you're a pretty flower. You pretty, I put you in my garden. Sounds like I'm stalking my flowers though. It's like a little, a little creepy and all right. Looking pretty good. Looking nice, right? Yeah. Now, as we go, you know, maybe I pull some white out and maybe we get more into the blue on some of the flowers. And that's okay. Maybe they have a little less purple and a little more blue. Mm. We don't mind that. That little weird blue flower having its little flowery moment. And a little bit of a petal here and there. Oh. There. So thoughtful. Every time I play with it, I just see something else. Like that. You just see little moments of color. All right, I'm gonna wipe this off. Wiping, wiping, wiping. And I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, just my pure yellow. We're gonna come out here and we're gonna make some little, you know, little butterfly flowers. Oh. Maybe there are three to five petals. like a little daisy and we're going to give them little bright pink centers. Now you can do all this with just the magenta, but I really like 
adding a little of the floral colors to them. Mm -hmm. That's you've got to decide if that's something you want to do because the floral colors are maybe not as archival. These are just little messy flowers. I think they're very neat. You see how it's just on the toe there, and you just kind of yeah. You let the knife and it go in, and you say, "Oh yeah." Bringing in some bits of yellow here and there, and you just kind of finish it out wherever you feel like you need a, a splash of that color. I'm going to take my magenta and put it out kind of by where I can get it into my white. I don't want to get too much green into it, so I'll put it right there. And we'll start out with just a little magenta, and then I'm going to finish out with the floral, and you'll be like, what? And I'm like, I know, it's crazy, so pretty. Let's look at this upright for a second and sip our cocoa. Uh, Polinari says, cinnamon, the flowers match your hair. Mm. And you. then Rula Robin says, I miss the paint you're using. So the brand of paint I'm using is abstract acrylic. And I use this one because it's the best value student paint in its price point, certainly where I'm at in North America. So, and it's made by a company that's famous for pigment and famous for making oil paints, pastels, acrylics. They've been doing this since, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred years. They got off. So <laughs> hmm. I say that's a leg like blase, but it really is true. Um, this is really fantastic stuff. And when you're doing artist knife, I highly recommend it because the pro paints can become very cost prohibitive if you're not regularly selling your work um, to use hmm. for this. Not that, not that you can't do other things. I'm just saying it would be like, it's a lot. Lori has warning for those of you at home. Are you ready? Lean in. It's a very important warning. Public service announcement from Lori <laughs> Renninger. Just so you know exactly. <laughs> Lori says, thanks guys. Word of advice. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever run with four gallons of milk. It does not end well. Mm. Thank you, Lauren. We will all slow down. <laughs> it's, it's, I guess, you know, they say don't cry over spilled mil milk, but if you're running with milk, is that like running with scissors, but with milk? So maybe you shouldn't, I don't understand this analogy. Mm. That I'm making. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying, don't run with four gallons of leaking milk. That's good. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Ashley Welk says, when doing the flowers, are you mixing the colors? Because they don't seem to be mixing on the canvas, and I don't seem to be going back. And does that help? So I am very gently wet into wet, layering and building up little bits of the color. You'll notice we'll get into things here and there. And, and, and a small amount of that is very advantageous for this. But yes, I am trying to be sure, I'm trying, trying to make sure that I don't take, like, I wouldn't want a bunch of green in my magenta. I want the green next to the magenta. So it does help, and I try not to go back over a retouch if I have to, like, kind of change angles. Mm. You know? And you got to remember, you can come from a different angle. You can, you can think about a thing, you know, differently. If you go too deep, you will pick up paint. And so that's just something to worry about. Not panic. I have too much anxiety, but just to just to be present to, you know, be aware.
It had little dollops of color. Yeah, just to talk about the little flowers. I grab a little of this and some white. Because I want to put a little bit here. Just to kind of finish that out. And those look so pretty. Why not, right? Little bits of something deep in the in the abstract. I'm going to turn a little bit to the side. We're almost done, guys. Mm. Just this kind of a relaxing, wonderful moment. Breathing in, breathing out. Mm. You love it? I love it. I do. One more magenta, squeezy, squeezy, lemon peasy. Mm. Mixing the pink. Let it be. This has to be registers pink to your eye. That's what you're going for. Light pink. It can be dark pink. You just want it to feel like a pink. Sometimes I got to get it loaded on that tip there like that. Just touching. And you can see the paint wants, acrylic wants to sort of stick to itself. And so that does kind of give us a hand sometimes a bit when we're trying to do a thing. It does kind of give us a, give, gives us an edge. A little. And these little kind of spiky flowers. One little pinks down. Mm. You want a nice distribution of flower, right? You want your little bouquet to feel like it's full. Yeah. Like, you know, we got into it. We did a thing. I'm going to put out my neon. Shirley Major has like done the math. <laughs> she see this in the chat. She's like, she's like gotten full bones on this situation. She's like, one gallon <laughs> of liquid is approximately 8.5 pounds. And times that by four, that's running with more than 30 pounds in your hands. I'm surprised she hasn't given you a skeletal breakdown of what that does to your bones. Mm. You gotta love women that do the math. Anyone that does the math. I love people that do the math. I'm going to add a little bit of the fluoro color to my white because I want a bright pink but I do want it to be light. I want to add this to a couple places on my flowers. They have little highlights. Mm-hmm. Like there's some petals that were lighter. I can even get a little bit of the pure neon into it. It can be loosely mixed. All good. Going down a little pop. Not necessary, not required, just lovely. Little pink centers. Just to pull those together. The little pink through there, it does a lot, I think, for the drama. And you want drama on your canvas, on your mm -hmm. life. Excellent. Almost done. You know, you just go through and you find places that you feel like you want to have more in there. And then, you know, when you're happy, it's done. Wow. And then you just let it sit overnight where the cats and the kids can't get to it. That's a good idea. Yeah. No kids, no cats. If your cat walks through painting, do not panic. Rubbing alcohol removes acrylic paint. Yep. You can get it out. And it really, really does do it. Even dried acrylic paint. 
So uh, that'll be safe enough, and that'll get it out of fur, out of hair, out of kids, out of pets, uh, if you're doing that. I, I try to say that a little more when we do thicker paintings like this, because, well, you know, it can be kind of a thing. So, Hattie, what do you guys think? I'm, this is <laughs> great. I loved it. All right. I really like this, too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can know when the next video is. Tomorrow, we're painting these tentacles underwater with splashing dice. It's very d, &D. It's very Halloween. We're doing it on a round canvas. But, of course, we have that really cool hack so that if all you have is a square canvas, you can still make something super cool that will impress everybody. And then on the 1st, we start Grateful Art Daily Live or at 1 p.m. Eastern. And go ahead and check out all the uh, uh, just uploaded videos because you're going to see several fall landscapes that blow your mind. You're going to see a turkey, and you're going to see a one-hoot mountain with fall leaves that you're going to really want to hit the remind button on. Hit the remind button on as many of those videos as you can. And support us by definitely sharing, tweeting, hashtagging in, let your friends know. Free art education here. Mm -hmm. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And we want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.